Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about Dell's CAM, C-A-M-M. -M. So let's dive right into it. So before we understand SCAM, we have to understand SODIM. So what exactly is that? Well, you and I call it laptop RAM. It's basically small outline dual inline memory module. Now, one of the amazing thing about this standard, basically this chip, is that this puppy has been there for 25 years, which is mind boggling for computer standard. To give you a context, this supported a lot of RAM generation. Generation came and went and this puppy was like, I was, I am, I will be. So it started with SD RAM, uh, then it went to DDR, then it went to DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, DDR5. So be mindful, this has survived a long time and uh, it has different notch position because be mindful, physical size is the same, but the pin count is different and not to mention sometimes even if the pin count is the same, you could fry something. So they use notch as a uh, differentiation so you do not mess it up. And it's a very good, it stops from mismatching, but it started to show its age specifically with DDR5 because DDR5 is finally reaching a point where connection, signal integrity, low power, all those things are very hard to achieve. Meaning there are two ways of solving signal integrity. A, you make path as efficient as possible. B, if your path does have let's say contacts and all that jazz, you just make it oomphish. Meaning instead of running on 3.3 volts, you make it run at higher volts. But if you want to do at low power, yeah, you can't do that anymore. Now you have to be in a position where it's like something has to go. So is starting to show. Basically, the standard, it has survived so long, it's pretty work, uh, working pretty well. But at DDR5, it's like, nah man, signal integrity is no longer there, cost is no longer there, no longer efficient. So, sodium was showing its age. So, Dell was in a very weird position where sodium is just not worth anymore and uh, DDR5 adds too much latency. To give you a context, uh, if Dell was manufacturing la latitude laptop, it's like, okay, this is a latitude laptop, we're gonna give you 32 gigs of SODIMS, 32 gigs of soldered, soldered RAM. The soldered RAM, even if it has exact same dies, soldered RAM will perform exponentially better. So it created a scenario where PCBs became way too much complex. Now again, why the heck PCB is complex? Because of what we call signal matching, meaning uh, basically these are what we call parallel standards. They communicate parallelly. So every signal has to start and reach at the same time. How do you make sure uh, that? Well, you make sure all the path basically from RAM to CPU is exactly the same length, but you can't do that because again, one would be closer, one would be further. So what you do? You do squiggly lines. So this is what we call uh, accordiation length matching. Now, again, this is a very common electrical standard. It's You can find that in PCBs of motherboard, uh, PCI cards, all that jazz. It's a common thing. But now it's reaching a point where at DDR5, this is becoming a hassle to deal with. Meaning uh, back in the days of like 100 pins and frustrating management. And not to mention, there was not enough tightness in clock cycles where it mattered that much. Now it matters that, uh, a lot. Now these things have to be extra precise. So that started to create an issue where PCB becomes too complex while giving you inferior performance. So uh, its companies directly started to solder them. Be mindful, every company is doing it. So a new standard was uh, needed or you have to solder it. Now why the heck Dell did not just solder it instead of creating this? Well, it also helps Dell. Because if Dell is a company that makes a high-end enterprise grade laptop, those laptops have big requirements and they have varied requirements, meaning they do not have the luxury to like, okay, every commercial client will only buy 32 gigs model. They do not have that luxury. So they can do is like, okay, let's make 10,000 of uh, 16 GB models, 10,000 of 32 GB model, and let's say a few model of 128. But if everybody buys 128, now they have to, well, they are stuck. Either they have to sell the old one, send it back to factory, redo the motherboard and all that jazz. Again, soldering does uh, limit their own potential. So they have to be in a position where they're like, hey, let's start to make something new. So uh, the only option was like, if they use this, they had to compromise on speed and thickness. Not only your laptop will become thicker, uh, you will be slower. On top of that, it cannot even flex its wing very well because nowadays people are dealing with large data set that is requiring 128 gigabytes of RAM in a laptops, again, commercial people, not you and me. Uh, it's like, it simply cannot go that far. Like, no, just no. And again, this standard is having hard time with DDR5. DDR6 is a thing. It's already in labs and already in some servers. So it's gonna happen today or tomorrow. So Dell wanted something to future-proof themselves. Where they're like, okay, for this generation of latitude, let's say we solve it one way or the another. And in again generation, by DDR6, we have to redo this all again. They're like, okay, let's start new, fresh. And be mindful, it's quite mind-boggling that something survived for 25 years in a computer industry. 
so this puppy was born c a m m so this is compression attached memory module now this standard basically through sodium heat it and engineers were given a clean slate it's like do it from scratch and what would you do now so what the first thing they did it made sure that cpu and ram socket is as close as possible now how do you do trace matching you physically can't do that you can see like let's say modules are there the one could be here one could be here how the heck you do trace matching again you make the board as big as possible you no longer give them limit the bigger you make it the more trace matching you can do more uh, zigzag you path length you can do and fine tune everything and because it's closer to the cpu even if let's say this module literally takes longer path because the grand total path is shorter signal integrity is much better so it can work at lower energy requirement compared to sodiums so a brand new standard with speed in mind and that's why this puppy has pins with more pins with even more pins so a lot of things and cpu closer to cpu for maximum throughput and large working area was designed from day one so you can see there are multiple standards even though they look like separate they are all the same like the whole patch of patterns will match so if you buy a dell latitude laptop right now that has like let's say this puppy of 32 gb or 64 gb you can still put 128 gb you know like isn't that bigger yes and no the board is bigger but the all the mounting holes are exactly the same and total footprint is exactly the same meaning you, you won't have this negative space that's it that's why like screw holes are exactly in the same location so they are all cross compatible meaning you can go down and up if somebody followed the standard properly it was designed in such a way that it has enough spare room so it has uh, and bill of material this is another aspect you have to understand from a company's point of view they want their cost to be as down as possible so they wanted to make this puppy as cheap to make it as possible and some things they did that was quite amazing is that motherboards will require a lot of costly equipment if they wanted to have something like this so they did not put it on motherboard because be mindful mod, uh, desktop motherboards or even server motherboard they have very huge cost just to add that high pin count socket how the heck you add high pin count socket on uh, motherboard without adding cost you don't you let it float there lies the compression attachment part meaning there is only exposed copper pads then you have exposed copper pad on uh, basically dims and then you have a physical part that is the pin array basically this is on a independent plastic now like why the heck you want to do it this way well benefit of doing it this way that this plastic becomes cheaper otherwise you have to use a plastic that can go through solder oven without melting again it can be done that's how all things are done it's just that it's expensive and not to mention every time you will change the design this will become a hassle so they are like okay pcb is there you put a grid pattern there this is very easy to etch you do the same thing on this and the complicated part it will be completely separate assembly and this also gives them the benefit of the doubt during let's say assembly maintenance or upgrade somebody messed this part up in that happens that happens to, uh, to enough people that even on motherboard that's like hey you bent up in warranty does not cover it here it's a minor inconvenience because it's like you open it it physically comes out it's not soldered to anything it's not soldered to that or to the motherboard it's completely free floating so you break it it will just another part that you have to buy and put it there voila so it's surprisingly well thought out not only just like okay it makes life of the basically manufacturer easier it also makes the life of people working on this easier so bill of material would be very similar would it be exactly the same no hell no because again sodiums are such a old standard that every puppy has basically every pcb manufacturers have a whole pipeline where it's like what do you want sodium okay which generation okay done everything like exact stamping machine exact cutting machine notching machine everything is pre-done again mass production does give you that but on a base level you can still calculate it's like how much material is going there this does not have the same like ludicrous bill of cost it's more or less the same so it's very good and they will give you different size for different capacity meaning on low capacities one like 32 gb it's single sided uh, 16 gb single sided and again the memory also becomes physically smaller so reducing cost exponentially pcbs are made out of fiberglass they are expensive so you do want to make them as small as possible so it's small you have single sided at 32 gb at 64 gb you go double sided at 128 gb you still go double sided and you use larger plate and not to mention that's not the limiting factor because again this was designed with speed in the mind it's also designed in such a way that in future higher density modules will come it happens with every ram modules every ram generation so now this same structure which right now they are showing off like 120 hp could easily go up to 256 gb or maybe even 512 we don't know so 
that's the whole idea of it so if you are running on something very low cost very low energy go with the small one if you are like something medium size go with the medium one you want gg1 go with gg1 so this is the idea from dell side and it's tightened by metal plates on both sides basically Be below the motherboard there is a metal plate uh, this plastic sandwich is there and then you have metal plate on top of it and that's why it has to be tightened properly compression has to be done correctly so jdac comes into the picture because be mindful dell build this dell is selling this it's done sorted but dell knew this if that they are gonna be the sole provider for that the cost would be very high so they have to make it into what we call standard mass production so they went to jdac now jdac is joint electron device engineering council basically it's just a group that makes sure that things work basically how do you know your bluetooth headphone will work with your other bluetooth devices if they are not from the same company bluetooth association makes sure of that uh, how do you know that sd card will work with other camera companies that say they receive sd card it works because of sd association there are association of almost everything that makes sure there is a standardized language specification basically rules and regulations so to say of that exact device jdac is the puppy that is responsible for memory specifically meaning how the heck you know square enix will work with uh, let's say any motherboard jdac if square enix is following jdac specification it will work same goes for dell dell wants to make this but they don't want to be the only company that makes it because again over time it will become very expensive for them so they are like hey we are making it right now we are getting it out in the board other companies jump on in make your own so in future you can easily have hey lenovo's i just had a second hand lenovo or let's say lenovo went in somebody dumped a lenovo laptop you're like hey this has 64 gb module but again something else broke water damage or something you're like put it in dell you can do that so that's the reason uh, they want to go to jdac and dell is working with them for standardization and dell will keep the patents now we were like wouldn't that makes it uh, Conflict of interest? No. Many things in this world have patents but still become a standard. For example, every optical format, CD, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever have you, there was a patent and they, again, patent they still had to be paid for. But again, it became standardized because some association was like, okay, we're going to standardize everything. So this uh, engineering council is not made out of random people. It's made out of uh, basically members from every major company. So Dell will keep the patent, but they will have a very small fee. Now, the fee has to be small enough that JTEC will agree to it. JTEC has to be like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, some uh, token change. And again, it will also help Dell uh, recover the R&D cost. And be mindful, this has been done in the past. This is done currently. This will be done in future also. So it's a normal thing to do. It's just they want to make sure it's good, where it's not like, you know, arm and a leg or a kidney. It's like good enough, minor inconvenience. And they cannot lock or withhold tech from any vendors, manufacturers or whatever have you. Basically, it has to become an open standard. Uh, so basically, any other company, even a new upcoming company, let's say a, a semiconductor company in India starts to like, hey, we want to make memory modules. JDAC was like, here's your specification. Pay us uh, the royalty and YOLO. So they are working on finalizing the specification. Now, right now, it's in a very awkward position because, again, Dell has made this, made it as in like it must be in the pipeline five to eight years ago uh, it, because again this sort of thing does take time so they made it they launched it so they know this works and again they are selling it on a latitude grade hardware those puppies are idiotically expensive so they're making it they're selling it they're confident on it and it does work it's not like experimental prototype it works question is how much tampering that jdec wants to do ideally as minimal as possible specifically in the physical department meaning even dell themselves would want it like hey the laptops that we are selling today Tomorrow, let's say somebody is releases a cheaper module where it's like 128 gig for, uh, you know, CCAM standard. People who bought the laptop should not feel like, oh, we can't use it. But again, if other companies shows, uh, shows up and looks at the patents and designs of all the jazz and they're like, hey, dude, you messed up this part up. This will come back to bite us in the future. They may have to change it. Right now, that's what's going on. Basically, JDAC and Dell and everybody else is working together to standardize this if every member association agrees on it this will become final if not some minor changes will be done hope for non-physical changes or changes in the firmware architecture that hopefully should be easy to do but if any major changes happen then uh, people who bought this right now would be uh, stuck so let's see what happens so what we can expect in the future well you have to understand this user upgradable ram is going away don't hold on to that hope that's gone 
that is flat out gone and dell the sole reason why dell is working on that is like they wanted their own life easier because you have to understand there is a whole ecosystem of hard working professionals that most of us do not know most of us do not know who have spreadsheet that is in measured in gigabytes to terabytes i don't even knew that spreadsheet could be that huge but apparently there is i did not even knew that there are people who can like i worked as a 3d game artist i did not need it that much and there are companies who are like yeah yeah, yeah. every uh, basically employee has uh, 64 gigs minimum and every employee laptop has quadro graphics card it's like what it's an ecosystem that we are not aware of. Again, these things are expensive. But in those sort of ecosystems, you go up with a lap, uh, Apple system, it's like, it's good, but it's useless. We need a lot of gigabyte just to load the damn file. You do not have that. Like what Apple is doing, like they are putting, so uh, basically, RAM chips directly in SOC, like this sort of structure. That's not gonna cut it for high-end hard worker situations. So Dell, Again, Dell wants to take care of them and they they had two options. Either A, go balls out, be like, okay, we're just gonna solder directly 128 GB, uh, price be damned. Because, uh, but again, at, at that point, Lenovo could have been like, hey, what if I give you options? So Dell was in a position where they had to risk it. So Dell did that. So Dell it, did it not for, okay, it's gonna make less e-waste or it's something like that. It's like, it makes us. Easy. I did like the design, like especially I really like the design that it does not have expensive plastic part that has to go through soldering a one. It's like, that's smart. And again, that also gives you peace of mind that if you break it, it's not end of the world. That's really long term thinking. Or basically somebody, some engineer looked at the how much hassle it is for uh, server grade processor which are like this huge and how much hassle it is to manage them. And they're like, what if it was not a hassle? So solder RAM will take over, over time. That's why I personally hate Apple. It's like, they standardize things that should not be standardized. And then people are like, ah, Apple is doing it, that's a better way. No, it's not. It's not a good way to freaking solder NVMe SSD, which I'm genuinely worried that other companies are looking at. It's like, nobody looks at the good thing Apple does. Everybody looks at the bad thing Apple does. So, so we are moving to, towards a world where you can have SOC on a laptop. So you know, that world where we had the ability to just change RAM or just that. Many times our hardware are, went into landfill simply because we could not fine tune it. We could not just adjust it. Many times people just upgrade their laptops, old laptops, not because like, oh, something bad happened to it. It's like generally battery can't be replaced or RAM became too limited. Many times. And back in the day, we had socketed CPU. So, and be mindful, imagine a world where you had uh, AMD's AM4 socket or AM5 socket. Be mindful, these sockets were in market for a long time and they had a lot of CPU support. Imagine you bought a laptop that had like socketed CPU AM4 in the beginning. Now you're like, bro, I'm sorted. Lot of support. Everybody is awesome. Everybody is happy. But again, planned obsolation is a part of life at this point in time. We all as a humanity have agreed that we have hundreds of planets to ruin. So let's ruin Earth with full speed. It does make me disappointed in humanity, but it is what it is. But I am happy at least Dell thought about people who are like working on repairing or something like that. It's like, yeah, it does break. So what if you make it a disposable part? I'm awesome. So this was my presentation on Dell's new RAM module design. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.